What's cracking, Josie Garfunkel? Let's learn some shit. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up a simple Dr. Jones trader, NPC and non NPC trader. How to set up your menus. Just get it going. If you don't already have this mod installed, I will have the link in the description. You will need to install it, add the keys and whatnot. Standard add in a mod. Let's go over a couple files real quick. Admins. If you have an admin yourself, of course, you put your Steam ID in here. It's pretty self explanatory. I don't know what it means. I don't really need the function of it for what I do with this. This is just a way for me to test my own mods within a trader so I can see multiple items at a time working instead of have to go through and add individual items. So once you learn how to set this up, it's pretty easy. The trader variables file controls different timers involved with the trader setup, such as the buy sell timer, how often you can buy or sell for people that spam the button, going too fast could crash the server, the whole number, the decimal, so this is 0.3 seconds, 3 tenths of a second. The stat update, how often the player trader stats get updated in the safe zones, so different trader menus and such if you have limited quantities, update every 5 seconds. Fire barrel, if you have a continuous fire barrel started so people can stay warm or cook every 7 seconds or whatever you want to set it on. You can read through these and finish them up, but that's the brief of that. And then we have trader vehicle parts. This determines what parts come on a vehicle for a vehicle trader. So if you purchase a vehicle, these are the parts that will come on it. If you add various mods of vehicles, you're going to want to add the parts for those vehicles so they work, such as expansion vehicles or anything else from other mods. Up next we have the trader config. Let's go over a couple things real quick. This is a .txt file, not an .xml or a .c file, it's a .txt file. So it works a little bit differently, but it still gets read. Comments like .c, where these would comment anything out in between, will crash and do not function within these .txt files. To comment out single lines, the standard way of double slashing does work. So if you need to make notes for yourself or comment things out throughout testing, you need to do it line by line, not as a whole. So first up we have our currency and the value set up. You'll notice there's an opening tag, but no closing tag. So that's just how this dot text works. So for currency name, only used for the text in the upper right corner of the trader menu, you're going to write what you want. To make it simple, most people use standard denomination. You could put pink fuzzy bunnies up here. It's not going to matter. It's just what's at the top of the menu for what that trader uses. Under that, you actually set the currencies, the type name or class name, and what the value is. I'm using a different mod for money. If you would like to have this mod, I'll have it linked in the description. CJ187, more money, has wallets, coins, golds, multiple denominations. It's a good little mod to put on your server to add some immersion. Moving on, next we have our traders, our actual traders and their menus. Now the trader name, that's what you're going to see on the marker across the map. And this is also how they're numbered. Again, an opening but no closing at the bottom of each section. Numbered 0 through 1, not actually numbered, but I number them so I can keep up with them. But it just counts it as this is the first trader as zero and we'll use those for our marker setups and our trader objects here in a little bit so the trader you put what you want the name of the trader to be across the map and then under it you have the categories these are the pages that you flip through while you're or menus that you flip through while you're in the trader and beside the category is what the category name is going to be at the top of each page Next, let's go over the quantity buy and sell. That's what this is at the end of each class name, item class name, so your type that you're using. 
This is the quantity, how much the trader has in stock. A star means the max value, so whatever it defaults to, it stays full. But you can also set this to limit. And of course, based on your variables, it'll determine how often it restocks or whatnot. Then you have the buy value. This is how much the item cost at the trader. And the sell value, how much the trader buys it for. This is just a simple setup for me to test some various mods, so it's not really choice. For a vehicle trader, instead of a star or an actual quantity, you're going to want to put a V, and that will give the vanilla vehicles included with this mod, they give it a key. If you would rather have it not have a key, you would put VNK, like this, and that vehicle will not come with a key. So if you want to set up different traders, make different cars cost more that come with keys, multiple ways to configure that there. And again, of course, your buy value and your sellback value. Last, we have trader objects. This is where your actual traders are going to be, how you set the markers, the safe zones, where the prompts are going to be to interact with. We're going to go over this. So. As I've said in my config, I keep my traders in order by putting a little double slash with the marker so I know which one is which as it doesn't actually keep track of it necessarily. You need to keep track of it starting with zero. So since this one is a consumables trader over here in the objects, I've started mine with consumables and that's marker zero. So across the map, that's where this is going to be. This is your coordinate for it. The X, the Y, and the Z separated by commas. And that's where the prompt is going to be for the trader. It's where the marker is going to exist for the trader. That's just where the trader is. The safe zone. This is the safe zone in meters from the trader where zombies instantly die. You can't pull your weapon out or swing a hatchet, any of that stuff. That's the actual safe zone. If you're using an NPC and you don't want to have a safe zone, and you don't want the trader to be able to be killed which is going to cause some weird issues you're going to need at least a very small safe zone so the NPC itself lives and cannot be killed be aware of that if your trader is going to have the option to sell vehicles under each individual one that does it in line you're going to have to put the vehicles spawn point and its orientation, this is the rotation. The rest of them don't really matter, just put it slightly above the actual ground level. It will default normal, you won't need to tilt it, pitch it, none of that. Just the rotation and the spot where the vehicle is going to spawn. If there's anything in the way of the vehicle spawning, you will get a message. So you might need to test to make sure no bush or fence or other object is in the way of your vehicle being spawned. Next in the objects file, we have the actual objects. The object is the entity that you interact with to trade. The object for an NPC, you're just going to put the survivor's name, the position of where that trader is going to be, its orientation or rotation, and then the objects that it's going to have. You can deck this out like an NPC if you're from the console side and remember suiting up NPC characters just layer them so that the parts are on it fill up their shoulders put a bag a vest deck them out how you want no need to really put anything in their pockets as you can't access that if you're using a non NPC entity you're gonna put the item where the objects is but instead of having actual attachments or an outfit you put NPC dummy this tells it that it's not an NPC and it lets you just have that entity there. Same as before, the position of the entity and its orientation. And then last, at the bottom of the file, you have other objects that are non-trader entities, such as the barrels, if you have a fire barrel, or want to use this part to decorate your trader instead of using a JSON setup. This is where you would put your objects, or how you would format your objects. Again, position and orientation. Yaw, pitch, roll, X, Y, Z, and the class name, or type. 
So let's go build a trader real quick and plug some numbers in and see if we can't make a basic setup. So when I begin setting up a trader, I start with Daisy Editor so I can place some things. I'm going to do something simple today. I'm just going to place some trader NPC and non-NPC item to show you the basic setup. I'm not going to decorate and actually build a trader today. So let's go find us a spot somewhere simple to demonstrate a trader. Let's go here to the quarry. It's a new destination. Let's find somewhere in here. This building looks good. Can you access it? All right. So we're going to put some trader stuff in here. We can decorate, put some countertops. Let's go ahead and do that. Static OBJ. See what we got here. Something simple just to make a little pre setup. Where'd you go? Oh, see, gotta have a shelf. Put some static items on there later. Make it look pretty. Use this little grounded mode, and when you move it again, it'll stay at the same Y axis you set it to. You can hold the Alt button and drag your mouse up and down to change it. A little tip. Now we need a countertop. Let's find a countertop. And then we're going to need, I guess, a register. Ooh, we'll just use the one that has a register on it. There we go. Copy this over here. Bring it down a little bit. You can hold C and move your mouse wheel and change your speed to slow yourself down a little bit so now we got a couple simple things placed let's put a vending machine for our non NPC trader easy peasy and we need an NPC survivor I favor Peter myself we're going to use Peter. Now once you place him, you're not going to see him. But if you double click him, you got him. Now when you place him, place him, he's going to drop and he's not going to be able to be rotated and moved as easily because he'll be alive, so to speak. But if you do it like this, I find he's not quite alive yet. Now he's going to fall to whatever ground is here, it seems like. I don't think we can actually bury him or compensate for the boot height or anything like that as far as blipping into the ground, clipping into the ground, but let's move him as close as possible. There we go. So now we have an NPC trader and a non-NPC trader. So let's export this information. Use it as a dot C just to get our info. Dr. Jones example export there we have it We've now got our information exported should be over here in our editor file Dr. Jones example dot C here's our information so for an example, I'm going to just put something at the top of my current objects file. Again, the order for this stuff doesn't matter. You're telling it what trader marker to have. So these don't have to be in order. It's just nice and clean to be able to do it like that. So I'm going to use my good enough trader here. It's got my new clothing mod. I like it. We're going to test it. So to start with, we need to get the coordinates from our NPC. It's going to be Peter. We're going to put these in place of here. This is where the marker is going to be for you to interact with. We're going to put that exactly how we put it in there, but they use commas to separate their coordinates. And then the orientation. Where's the orientation? Oh, this one doesn't have orientation. Doesn't need it. And the vehicle spawn, we don't need that part of it. I'm not demoing all that all right let's find us trader here bring that up here 
put it with it here again these don't matter this is just my way of keeping track of what's what we're gonna use Peter and we want these coordinates of course and we're gonna need the orientation I do believe they're 180 but we're gonna check it anyway so that's 40 degrees and it's the first number that is the orientation so 40 and this is what he'll be wearing holding it's using multiple different things here and that's pretty much it for that part of it now those few objects that we added in let's go down here and get ourselves a little template like I said these are just how you would add objects to be part of the trader this file could go on for days the way I build so for starters we have a couple items here we used a shelf Now, for our non-NPC trader, we're going to use Trader Marker 0, so let's just copy one of these. Vending machine, why wouldn't it be food? And we're going to take the coordinates from the vending machine. We're going to place those here. Again, separate those by a comma from copying them over from the dot C and this is the safe zone for that make it zero it's not gonna matter or well let's make it three so I can show you an example of what it looks like when you enter and leave now we need our non NPC example so in the file NPC dummy and that's this bring that back up here already has the vending machine of course because that's the dummy I used for another build copy your coordinates over for where you want this to exist don't forget your commas and then check your orientation minus 143 we're judging to be the 220 and then of course its attachments are full caps NPC underscore dummy and that tells the marker where to be and the object should be the vending machine so let's load up and go take a look at what we have now if everything worked out right so let's go check out what we just did you're probably using a live Metrado server I'm using a local server because I don't have a live Nitrato server. Nitrato, holler at your boy. Alright, let's head over here and see what we got. We put stuff inside this building. Sure enough, we got our trader here, our NPC different categories as you can see with the price and whatnot got all the mods working there and then we have our non NPC with the slight safe zone yes you have entered a safe zone you're leaving the safe zone so we have a tiny little three meter radius of safe zone for example and interacting with it you got some items and whatnot you can buy so there it is, NPC, non-NPC, safe zone, extra items placed for decoration, all that by example. And that's pretty much it for this one. Hope you learned some shit. I'm out.